meeting is now called to order. Uh, uh, you can yeah, view this on mm -hmm. RCTV um, channel 33, Verizon, or Comcast 22. Um, first uh, item on the agenda is uh, 7 o'clock notice of intent 270-0714, 135, 139, 149. Our Howard Street, Map 10, Lot 75, 76, and 77, Infrastructure Holdings, LLC. And that has been um, postponed until the next meeting, correct, Chuck? It has been. Um, being 706, we can uh, proceed to 705. Notice of intent uh, 270- Is there a number for this yet? Yes, it's uh, 2007. 0720. And it's Veterans Way, Lot 5, Map 45, Lots 104 and 106, Mass, Mass Equity Investors, LLC. I have. Thank you. For the record, John Tilt, <coughs> William Sparages Engineering. I'm with Jackie. Um, well, it's reason we would have the plan sooner. We just got the DEP, uh, DEP file number today. Uh, we were chasing them for two weeks, a month. So they did issue one late this afternoon, um, and we uh, fought the chuck. Um, so we, pre we presented the plans for you, um, which you saw two weeks ago. Um, the change to the plan up with, that we talked about, I know Thor acting was here last time. Um, the singly home. Uh, driveway with two separate drivers, one below on the lower level, one up higher. Um, the difference with this plan is we're, we're introducing two infiltration chambers for the front roof discharge, uh, we talked about last meeting. Um, and also we were proposing a propane tank in, it should face the upper left hand corner, which is outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, so nothing really changed besides that. And there was a, a question regarding the grading behind the wall, downside, well inside. The reason we had to pitch up a little bit is to um, make sure the wall height stays on the four feet. And also, I did some pictures. Downside of the walls we go is you want to make sure we have positive grading away from the wall. Back here, we're only talking about a foot. So this is this, this is the um, the high side this way. So we just, we want to kind of clean up, massage it. So this is the um, so just a, like a, a foot or so grading up the hill to the bottom, the foot of the wall, which is in this area here. Where is this taken? So uh, so we had proposed a wall. We, they're questioning last time. We had a little bit of grading up towards the wall, and it's a three to one. It's, um, it's just to keep the water away from the wall, pitching back towards the wetland. It's still 35 feet out of the, uh, away from the wetland, instead of the buffer zone. Um, Thor had said that came up last time. It also keeps our wall height four feet or less. We're proposing here, we didn't want a really high wall there. So we're only feeling like it pitches up about three to one, about a foot or so in this area here. But you are still proposing grading between the 35 and the 25. The, actually, the 35. That 202. Yeah, 202, just double check that. Because I think that was probably the last meeting we were talking about maybe not having grading there. Yeah, between, yeah right, just a little bit grading between the 25 and 35, right? What's the purpose of that? So the purpose was we, that we take wall is here, and we want to keep it down to four feet. We don't want to go five feet about Then you get some structural design, maybe some footing. So we can do a, a freestanding wall. It's four feet or less. If I'm pitching it up at a three one slightly, we can reduce that wall height and allow the, the water to run away from. It's very flat down here, and we on those grades here. You can see it's kind of kind of some low spots. We want to make sure we have positive grading away from that wall and towards the wetland. And that's why we did that. And some of the areas already been previously disturbed. We have an outlet here, two outlets from the um, infiltration system here. So that's why we're proposing that part there. I mean, if we can avoid any tree cutting any more than that, um, you know, we can condition that and just kind of work the grades around there. So at the wall, maybe just less more feet. Not four feet of fill, but maybe like a foot of fill. 
but we did you know add two infiltration chambers two in the front here and here uh, which were on the plan the site still mitigates stormwater management uh, was approved by engineering this is in addition to that um, so Did you, did you take away an infiltration on another house? No, we did not. This is addition. This is, so we, we mitigated on lot three, we added um, infiltrations there, but on this two, it was spoke about last meeting that you'd like to see some infiltration in the front, at least the front. So we added two more infiltration chambers. Um, so we didn't take anything away, we're just adding more infiltration to the site. Is there a new engineer design for that wall that we, we can see? In the definitive plan, we have some um, approved definitive set for the entire subdivision. We have details of those walls in there. And the freestanding walls, um, anything over that will be, have to be um, engineer designed. Um, so. so did we, do we have that, and do we have that design? No. Because yeah. it was part of the. Feet, right? What's that? The wall is under feet tall, right? We're trying to keep four feet or less. Feet less. Right. And I do believe in the definitive plan set that was approved, there's wall details in that back two years ago. So this whole wall is in, it's rebuilt as one. It was part of the, I think, the initial organization's <laughs> infrastructure is building that wall up through here, through the whole thing. Um, the difference between the two plans I'm seeing some kind of an infiltration on the old plan, I think on the next house, which doesn't appear. Yeah. Over here? Yeah. Right there? Yeah, right. Uh, it's missing. Yeah, it's on. Is it on your plan? There's <coughs> Showing a deck. All that. I think, I think there is that infiltration. Okay. There. There, we show it originally here. Um, there, there's got to be, it's, that is approved. The other plan is approved. I mean, so I'm just not, didn't show up. I probably on didn't this show plan. it there, right? Okay. Yeah, this doesn't mean it's not on the other plan because that's sort of a condition. That's a separate item. Sometimes you take things off to clear up the, the plan. It gets kind of messy. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions from the commission members? Uh, it's just, uh, I was looking through the order. Did you guys file a um, variance with this? For the, um, for the use? For just for, to, no, for, for us, for that encroachment into the 25 foot area. Is that high density? So we're outside of 25. Were you, were you, were you in the 35? Yeah, 30, so the, the, the 25. Want to see it? Like see, the 35 yeah, is impossible. Yeah, I thought it was a 25. That looks no, like 25 is the fence. Yeah. It's hard to see it. Oh, okay, so that's the 35. Right. So in between, the fence is one foot beyond the 25. Yeah. So you're actually 26 feet away. Between the 25 and 35, we have a little bit of grading in there to, to reduce the wall height and, and give us a positive pitch away from the wall and towards the wetland. Because it does have some low points in there and, it, it, you know, We can make the wall higher, but I mean, we might need a structural design. And then you're talking about footings, and the whole purpose was trying to avoid that best we could. Hmm. So you think it only needs to come up a foot, or is it two feet? And does that work? I mean, is that is the engineering department going to accept that? They already have. That was the same one we submitted for. Nothing's changed from the original plan. That's what I said. Generally, walls on a slope. You do need footing. You, there's yeah, there's not, this, we're talking three to one here now. A steep slope, yeah. This would probably vary like maybe six inches or so. Uh, anything four feet, and then we start getting to a, a footing on anything, which is frost wall footing, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. We're really holding back more material. The point was to try to avoid that. And one of those block walls you see there are kind of freestanding almost. So this that's what we're trying to do there. Become the template for the rest of the wall? Or is it only in lot five? Yeah, that's the rest of the wall. Happening. That's probably where it gets its highest. And we're trying to, just really trying to push that wall. Besides the ugly look, it might be from Main Street. And, um, so we're approving this buildup of, of material on the wetland side of the wall, lots uh, four and three also, if, right. if needed. If needed, yeah. Well, the wall actually stops at, 
at four, right behind the the. the right behind four, right? Pond. Yeah, it's yeah. actually right. Oh, and then you don't need it anymore. Yeah, it Doesn't stops at the retention the pond. So yeah. I'm I'm still I'm sorry to so harp on this. I'm okay. still a little confused about so uh, the actual elevation change between the deck um, and the 25 foot line. So the contour on top of the wall at the up uphill side is 208. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's the contour at the bottom of the wall? It should be 206, 204. Yeah, so it's just it's just off. We probably 207 and a half, probably top of the wall. But the finish grade at the top of the wall is going to be 208. And that's your proposed finish. 2075. Grade. Yeah, with the 208 runs just off the wall a little bit, so maybe 207 and a half, 207.8, and then the bottom of the wall is a 204 contour, runs along the wall. So the whole the whole idea was four feet. I mean, if you, we could say no grading that area. I mean, we could work with with that, um, but you know, we'll we'll come back with a wall design for engineering. Is the uh, drain easement outfall? Is that already built? Yeah, that's a way. Those two triangle yeah, like built and the outfall is both built. Yes. Yeah, both of them those are. Yeah. And is the fill around those kind of localized? I think it's for the most part, yeah. I don't because the wall's not built yet. They kind of say it's three feet over. It is pushed over the way. It's not finished yet. So. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So okay. the pictures just as a parameter to propose. Yeah, I just wanted to see what. Uh, if we is that flood zone out there? Was, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. No, not in that area. We're we're near it, but. I don't know. <laughs> My preference is to keep as much fill out of that area as possible. I would agree. You know, and that's something we said at the last meeting. Um, but I don't see a change here. So I'm just going to repeat what I said at the last meeting. So what do you, what's the alternative? A higher wall? Yeah. Higher wall with footings. Yeah, then you have footings. So that 202 is three feet off of the wall to have a three to one slope, right? That's that's, that's three Five feet. Here. It's, it's more than three feet. It's, it should be, it's about six feet away from the wall. The 202? Yeah. You're trying to maintain the three to one slope. Three to one slope from the 202 to the bottom of the wall. Three okay. to one slope. And then pitch up from there. I don't have to suffer vacation. I just work every day. Not every day. Yeah, it's six, six feet of fill. Six feet lateral off the wall. And you're at two foot elevation, so it's three to one. So the fill is above the 26, between the 26 and the 35. It's not the zone of natural vegetation. It's the zone, no structure zone. Um, trying to think of another spot where we, you know, allow this modification. I can't, but I'm, and I'm not, I'm not really concerned about it. It's not flood zone. It's up against the wall. And I was just thinking if it could get seeded or vegetated. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be now dry. Right. And that area was all wet before. It was my question is, if you did fill, what was, what's the proposal for stabilizing the fill? For it's three to one, so it really doesn't have much pitch to it. It's just, we're getting some topsoil and then just um, the gravel backfill to the full wall. So, so you said it's six feet? What's that? It's, it's six feet of fill? No, no, six feet. Oh, it's wide. 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 wide from the... Wide. Right. 
So what's the bottom of the wall going to look like at the end of the day? Like, it, it's grass, is it? Well, so you have grass coming up, and you have the, um, it's like, it's really a first line wall, which kind of six feet below surface. Um, gravel need that, so the grass will come up, the bonnet wall, and pitch up. So. Now you're going to do plant some grass or some yeah, I mean, vegetation on that fill area? You, uh, yeah, I think they would. Part of the condition is what you want there, grass or a wild mixed seed. Um, it's, it'll get a decent amount of shade back there. Are, I right. Yeah, because it's too up Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. What you just said would be better than what you want to mix. That's okay. I mean, I think it'd be fine with the wetland mix and that, whatever. And, you know, the wildflower mix. Right, yeah. And something six, that's going to keep it, if you have, you know, a couple of summer thunder showers, it's going to. It's going to shed off into the wetland. Yeah. Going to be filled in. Right. Filled. Okay. Okay. So, who have accepted this for in the building department? Was this? Uh, uh, did they even mention it? Well, this wall and how it's every being built. Inch you the wall. So the wall was part of the site plan. It was approved Itself. by the planning board. That was approved by this commission. That, that was on the original the yeah. plan. We always, we've always showed the wall there from the it's very beginning. It's been there the whole time. So. Yeah, there was the wall. No, I know it's been there, but yeah. but now, it, so we didn't approve this part of the wall. This is new. We approved a four-foot wall. or. We were talked always talked about a four foot wall. Now it's a six foot wall. No, it's a four foot wall. Four foot wall. We're proposing a four foot wall. What you're proposing is a higher wall. We're sticking to four feet. No, wait a minute. It's a six foot wall if you can't do the fill, and the yeah. fill's not there now. No, but yeah. the fill was on the original plan. <laughs> we haven't changed anything from the original order conditions for this site. We have not changed a thing. Yeah. Okay, so you came back once regrading changes. And our point was the reason we did that is to reduce the wall height to four feet from the very beginning, from day one, and pitch it three to one back towards the well -end. That's we, That's the reason. And that's on the site plan. That's on the original plan. If you want right. to pull the fitter plan. Now I get it. So we stuck with that. Right. Right. Yep, now I get it. Okay, okay. thanks. So we approved this originally. It's on the site plan. <laughs> well, so but here's, here's one of my comments, though, is the, is the 202 contour that's existing, um, like comes, oh, I see what you're saying. Two two it, it comes up a little bit closer to the wall that's proposed. And right. what you were saying is the grade difference between the existing 202 and the 204 at the base of the wall would be, that slope would be too much. If, if we left it alone, you mean? I'm wondering why the 202 fill area is even needed I mean, I'm still trying to kind of wrap my head around so, so we, we can limit the 202, but then you're ready to 3 to 1 slope, which is a violation, doesn't right. meet your policy. Right. So what we did, 3 to 1 from the edge of the stair, 25 foot, yeah. to that wall to create a 4 foot wall. We're compliant with everything that's in your policy. Yeah, it sounds so like we already approved it. Just ask, cause, and I, I apologize, I wasn't here at the last, the last meeting, but if I draw a line at the the wall. Yeah. Anything to the right of that? Has anything changed since the site? No. Okay. No. Then, uh, uh, then I don't have an issue. No, it's the house. It's the house. Got it. It's everything to the left. This, this What's been proposed we have to the left of that wall is is the new stuff on the. The changes are from here over. From here, nothing. He asked for the infiltration of the roof mm -hmm. in the front. Right. That's correct. That's mm -hmm. two weeks ago. Yeah. We added that. That wasn't part of the original order conditions. Yeah. And what does the infiltration look like? Is it? So we expect it's a uh, Coltec 330 chambers. Two, we didn't put them pair them together. We didn't want to be. We have one here and one this side. We really couldn't get a spot. Have them back to back. So we spread them out. One in the front here and one on the side there. Is that in the notes? Yeah. Uh, we show it in the plan. We actually right here we know. Subsurface recharge system. Right. Here. But it like the spec for it or the specs are in. I think we did a lot three was it added for three. Um, I don't know if you condition what type it was, but uh, it's designed for two year storm, which was the three thirty Caltech chamber. We did two of those four four lot three. Three on lot three. Right. And I don't know how many on lot four. All right. So that's typically what we do, and so and those were in addition to the mitigation study that the engineering accepted. So we're going. This is above and beyond. 
Yeah, the only, um, you know, the only issue I see with the fill is, you know, I don't like to see fill encroachment in areas that are already established vegetation. But fill was okay. already approved by right. this commission. Okay. Why are we? Why did we get into this discussion? I, I think there's, my, I mean, my take on it, me get, is there's just confusion because we're looking at a plan for a lot. And there was something that we've already approved, but you, you just naturally look at everything on the page. Just like we're looking at, there's an infiltration based on the property next door okay. and it doesn't exist. Okay, but it would ultimately, have been nice if you had said, um, we had approved this before. Yeah, well, ultimately. I, I think that would have been helped us a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, it's been a long time, and I know it's not yet. Yeah. Um, is everybody satisfied with? Well, are you going to ask um, for the whatever the seed mix is? I mean, it sounds like they're willing to at least yeah. throw some seed mix out there. Yeah, compare the conditions. Yeah. Okay. And I think that Coltec chamber should probably be specified to yeah. somewhere on this plan or somewhere in the order of conditions. So that yeah, I can send you a note. Chuck is the one we use for lot three, similar types. Engineering approved. So. Are there any other questions? Um, any questions from the community? Okay. Hearing none. Are we going to, are we, do we need to continue this? We can close. I, there's some changes that came up. I have a new plan. I have the cultec and I have the seated. I have it 99% complete. Their applicant only wants it closed tonight. If that would be, and then I can make the changes and we can sign it at the next meeting. But before we agree to that, I just want to make sure that we have a quorum at the next meeting, which is July 10th. Kath, I won't yeah. be there. I'll I will, be there. I will not be there. I won't be there. I'll be here. So that's, that's, not, that's not a quorum. So no. let's sign it tonight. No. You can do that math that fast. Sign <laughs> it tonight, and I'll, I'll make, I'll... Even though you signed it, I still have 21 Changes. days to issue, right. Right. Yeah. issue it. Um, but it's it's closed and signed. Yeah. And I have to just make the changes, which okay. shouldn't Might take that. Make a motion to close. Second. All those in favor? You need a vacation. <laughs> I do. Press <laughs> it. All right. No. Good. Yep, thank you, John. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, send you a snapshot so you're jealous. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No. Oh. No. I'm sure it's something that is critical to your life on earth. So this is a minor no. minor mod, right? That's why we drive. What are you talking about? Yes. By Veterans Way. Was it a notice? Oh, no. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. No. No, we just closed. I just closed. 107. It. We just continued. On that. We continued 107. Well, not yet. It hasn't come up yet. So we request. We have a request to continue. How is she requested to continue? Also, we didn't vote to continue it to the. You know, it doesn't seem like it's going to be July 10th. So I don't think it needs to be continued any. to. I can't, I can't be here alone. Well, yeah. I trust you. Do you want to ask who <laughs> could be here on what the What could 25th? go wrong? Looks <laughs> <laughs> like. Is that the 24th? 25th? Oh, 24th, yeah. July 24th? Who's going to be here on the 24th? I will be. I will not be. Not? not? Here. Mike, I, have, I have no one be, unfortunately. All plans to be here the, the 24th. So, the 24th sounds fine. 
if, if, if Bob comes. Yeah, I mean, I... So we have a meeting on the 24th. We won't have one for the 10th. I, I, Are you sure you, we, we don't have a quorum for the 10th? So we can't... Uh, Bob, Bob. Both these applicants requested to be continued until July 10th. That's all we can do. And I'll contact them and ask them for an extension. All right. Do we need to vote on it? Yeah, you would, you would make a... Motion. motion to continue the hearing till uh, July 10th, both for Palmer, uh, 107 Main Street, and um, 135 and 139 and 149 Howard Street. So moved. All in favor? All right, so uh, I think... Uh, our working sessions here and everything else is on the uh, old and new business agenda so there's no order so if you would like to get uh, allow this sure to, to make that sure so uh, we'll we'll do uh, 259 and 267 Main Street uh, pre-filing working session right now will you all introduce yourselves and uh, does someone have a PowerPoint I do yep Great. Let me give you this. Good evening. Uh, my name is Joe Pesnola from Hancock Associates. Um, we're presenting Snowgate Development with us tonight is Jay Finnegan, one of the principals. Um, David Powell, our wetland scientist. Um, we're, Mr. Finnegan is, is in a due diligence period on uh, the purchase, the possible purchase of 259 Main Street. Um, which is a work site um, I to ask you. on the on the east side of Main Street. It's Street. it's an old uh, heating and uh, oil company uh, property. It's it's been I think the, the commission knows it. It's um, had a lot of uh, history on it and a lot of degraded areas on site. Um, so we are um, again in a due diligence period trying to figure out whether or not. The Mr. Finnegan uh, is willing to, to purchase the price to redevelop it for uh, residential condominiums. Um, Mr. Finnegan, for the past 20 plus years, has, has built um, residential condominiums, uh, and he has a kind of a one building format that is a three story uh, over a, a par parking under the single building. In this case, it would be a 24 unit building. Um, it's zoned for that. It would be located uh, up towards the front of the property. Property, uh, very similar to the property just to the to the south. When I, um, yeah, that's a good. This one here. So that's a good overview. So conceptually, what what we've done, just to give you some background, we've we've uh, delineated the wetlands and the riverfront. Um, Mr. Finnegan has engaged a an LSP to go out and do a phase two uh, environmental assessment to, to make sure that there's not um, contamination on the site that would drive up redevelopment costs and that came back fairly clean there's uh, despite the, the history on the on the on the property and we've also done some geotechnical exploration just to understand the underlying soils because it did look like there was um, Phil brought into the site over the many, many years that it's been um, worked on. Um, but our, so the, essentially the, the property is uh, the streams out, out back, uh, walk, uh, Walker's Brook. Um, there is a sewer easement and an active sewer line on our, on our property that is the, uh, uh, with an easement to uh, Reading Sewer Department. Uh, you've got riverfront with the inner riparian and an outer riparian. Um, and the lot, you know, the buildable area of the lot out, out in front. Um, this is not part of the property, so it kind of uh, jogs around that. So our, our proposal would be fairly compact with a 24-unit building put right on, on the street um, with a driveway here going into the parking <laughs> under and then a little bit of parking uh, in the back with some um, stormwater stormwater management. Um, the, the BVW does come up um, towards the street in this area uh, and really what we're here to talk about is 
kind of a balancing between um, some wetland impacts and some real opportunity for uh, for mitigation, restoration, obviously replication um, uh, within the, the, the wetlands and the riverfront itself. Uh, and and David's been on site with with Chuck, and we've had several conversations with with Chuck with regards to just the global concept of this. And we thought that we'd like an opportunity just to have have a discu open discussion with the commission um, about the the ideas for mitigation. And um, there certainly is opportunities here again for um, invasive species management um, and. Uh, restoration of riverfront um, and potentially some uh, maybe some some walking trails or what have you the the impacts that we're talking about are about uh, 2,500 square feet of, of, of BBW um, so what we would do is come in and uh, the wetland line wetland line is here uh, we'd have some temporary impacts to install a retaining wall and then would have uh, the, the red hatched area would be a permanent impact. Um, so that would that would allow us to build within the the the, the zoning envisioned as far as uh, as far as that's concerned. We can go back, Chuck, just to one. There is a, a zone line that runs right through here, so we're kind of forced into um, developing here. Um, we actually can't can't put the building behind the zone line. Why can't you put the building? Because I'm thinking, what if you, because we walked out there um, yesterday and we saw the. Yeah, the, the zone line's right here. So the, the building has to go to to the west of the. Uh, of so the, it's a zoning? It's a zoning line. Oh, okay. So, this is, okay. Um, so that's why the building down to the south is, is exactly positioned like that. So the zone line comes right through here. This is, um, um, I, I forget the terminology, but this is basically single family residential and this allowed, this zone allows multifamily. So. So, um, just so I get a, a little bit of an idea because I guess I misunderstood or was looking at the wrong line. Where is the BVW line on this plane? Yeah. So the BVW line is, is here. Okay. That's what I'm following. Do you want to run through? Oh, the yeah. Got it. Okay. And then you've got riverfront here <laughs> and inner riparian here. So, yeah. off you went to the side. If, if you go back two slides, I, I had to break it down on the, the these are the existing conditions, so these aren't, um, it doesn't show the, the development. So, I, I tried to break it down because it is very busy line work. Yep. So, the, the riverfront area, the, these are bank flags associated with the perennial stream that runs on the back side of the property. Okay. So the green line represents the first 100 foot inner, inner riparian zone, yeah. and the red line represents the 200 foot um, riverfront area. Okay. And then if you flip to the next slide, this characterized BBW. So the B, this whole area is wetland. Um, this this is a very low lying area that um, it's not it's not 100 year floodplain. Um, it's map zone X 500 year floodplain, which is non jurisdictional. But you can see the the, the characteristics of this being sort of floodplain. It's also um, historically modified. There's, uh, you can see some of the steep grades down here. And if you've walked out there, there's a steep gradient burn that runs the, 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 the most you know, distance across the property. And the, the wetland line coincides with the toe of that slope. Um, and then the red line represents uh, your municipal setback zone, and the blue line represents the 100 foot buffer zone. And the, this line right here, again, is the uh, zoning restriction that, that holds us to that side of the, the zoning ordinance. And if we configure the building here, it's this area of wetland jog out that comes out where we've tried to configure the building to avoid, minimize, and uh, to the maximum extent practicable. And then the next line would be mitigate, which are, are opportunities that we have. So if we could go back to that plan, I'm sorry, sure. just again. Yes. I got okay. So this, so this, and it's also realigned. It, it's it's not a, it's turn one sixty, right? That's not a property line. Then that's coming at the angle right to the the middle of that red zone. It's an this interior property line between two parcels. Between two parcels. Was, but you would have both parcels there. Right. Got there it. was there was a, a historically a, a 
a residence on on this property. Yeah, and then the oil business was was out of this uh, this building. Okay, so, sorry, just trying to get my bearings. Straight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's why we're going to answer questions. That's why there's the the two uh, postal addresses. Is yeah. that there's the triangular property, and, and these would be um, uh, no. merged. Yeah. There was. Um, and that's one of the things is, is that close to this area where our wetland impact is um, proposed is where the the home lot was actually really abutting the wetland. When we went out there, they'd already raised the home um, and it was no longer there. But even in aerial photography, you can see where the, the sediment controls were still in line along the wetland boundary. And there's still some footings uh, where the, the historic residence was. What's that green? Area. The green is within. That's we would we would uh, again because we've um, by necessity we would you know propose well and fill the green represents your municipal setbacks. So we would have foot? to yeah. So th is that correct, Joe? The yeah. green is so that's we would need a, a red, waiver. Red is BBW green is within the thirty-five foot. Yes. Yep. Did you? So that one of my question was: Does that plan doesn't show the twenty-five foot and the thirty-five foot? It's just, that line is just the thirty-five foot. Okay. Is that is that correct? The red one. Right. Yeah, there's one, one line. So you have two municipal. You have a 25. 25. No, some natural uh, vegetation. No vegetation. So it's a kind of a no build, and the 35 foot is between the 25 foot and the 35 foot is a there's no, no structure. Build. Okay, no structure. Right. So that's again. So yeah, those. I mean, that that is the explicit purpose of us coming before you tonight, is investigating because there are wetland regulatory constraints that yeah. that we would need to make some exception for. So as no. oh, oh, go ahead, no, please. So you're pretty limited to the front part of the property. Do you have a vision? I mean, you, like you said, there's historic filling in the back there to looks like create ramps and driveways and access roads, I presumably for the guests. Do you have a vision for what's going on back there? Like what what it would look like back there? I mean, or would do you not really? What you've got proposed is essentially what you you're looking yeah, to do. Yeah, we wouldn't. We, we would. It would be natural. We yeah. would try to to do riverfront and buffer zone. Restoration um, enhancement. Uh, try to bring some some habitat features uh, back, but it wouldn't. No, we wouldn't have um, any active recreation or anything like that. Mr. Finnegan's model essentially is it's not it's not um, restricted housing, but it's um, age targeted. So so by design, they don't do a lot of amenities. Um, they do parking under. Um, they don't do play areas and things like that, and, the tar and their target audience tends to be um, empty nesters and and and, su and such. So there's not a need to do any kind of active recreational areas. In the, in What's the, the square footage of the the area that we're talking the about? The impact area in the BVW. Yep. So if you go one more slide, actually, I, I've highlighted so you can see. So the permanent impact would be approximately 2,700 uh, square feet, for which we would uh, work to find uh, replication for that. Um, there is associated 800 uh, square feet of temporary wetland impact. Just during construction, that would be the impact area, but this would be um, renaturalized and um, uh, post-construction. So uh, I did want to, it was on this screen, just to m make the commission aware of, of this area right here. Um, so a couple years back, there was a condemned house there, and it was deemed to be dangerous. And Glenn wanted it taken down. They've left the foundation in this area. So I think the extent of this kind of fill, that's hay that you see on top of there when this picture was taken, was just underneath the porch. Some of you walked out there, and it was just underneath the porch. And just beyond that, it was probably kind of a wet, wet area so somewhere in here is the wet area but I think if we went to Google Maps you would see that historic view or maybe there's some others available right. that there's probably more yard out there and I think me and Becky saw uh, uh, like a, a campfire or, or whatever that was there the, the stove thing camp stove the brick Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, there was something out here, and and and, and oh, this, yes, 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 yes. this was all, or some part of this, probably was yard back in the day. So where they're proposing to do the fill seems to be 
the area that was previously disturbed. I think that you might have to do oh, some yeah, more work yeah. on that. But, oh, yep. But absolutely. And again, we were looking, we had walked in this direction here, and then, and then came in through this opening. I was trying to line up with the corner of the building mm -hmm. here yeah. and the corner of the building here to get our, get our bearings. And, and that's exactly where that material was that was, you know, from someone's yard. So just just to let you know that commission. Thank you, sir. Um so it's only seven hundred square feet that you're yes. gonna fill. Yep. Um is our replication two to one? That's awesome. Ours is two to one. Yep. Okay. So have you I, I, this that peninsula of fill that yeah, just this, out. yeah right here I think is the the most right so that so that segues into the, the the next talking point of our discussion so not all wetlands are created equal once you a, a, a wetland from a regulatory context that if it's classified as BVW all BVW gets the same performance standards regardless of uh, pristine wetlands or or uh, degraded wetlands once you get beyond that um, and this I understand municipal ordinance may be different or more stringent in terms of the two to one criteria versus the state's minimal one to one criteria. But even from, from DEP's context, they, you know, and I learned more about this at the one of the most recent MACC conferences, DEP actually gave a presentation that if you're not able to, strict adherence to the wetland replication guidelines is you can look at and um, uh, mitigation in terms of restoration and other opportunities. So once you get beyond the fact that, that all BVW has the same regulatory context associated with it, you, you really need to get into looking at it from functions and value standpoints. So the wetland, the, the, the interest for wetlands protection, there's uh, seven or eight um, um, interests for wildlife habitat, fisheries habitat, shellfish, which we don't have on site, but you have stormwater, um, uh, maintaining groundwater, and uh, um, public water supply and this is a this is a heavily degraded wetland the site is is has a long history of, of degradation the entire wetland area in here is um, it's mostly invasive species and it's very little diverse species that are in here most of the species that are in here the mature trees are, are uh, look like there's some red maple in there but there's a lot of normal maple and of particular um, importance out there is is oriental bittersweet and I mean, oriental bittersweet, you normally see it growing like vinous up in trees, but as it grows into maturity, it becomes really dense, woody growth. And I mean, I, this site, more than any other I've seen, did you walk out there and see, I mean, these are, are woody yeah. vines that are like six or eight inch diameter breast height that are climbing up these trees in Suffolk. Florida is poison ivy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's, mostly, it's mostly bittersweet. So... There are several opportunities. In, in the DEP seminar that they had at MACC, was said one, once you get beyond the, the replication criteria, and if you're not able to meet that, is if you can demonstrate that through other mitigation opportunities for uh, well enhancements and restoration, uh, improvements to water quality, that the commission, conservation commissions and the state can look at making a judgment of whether or not there's a net benefit to the wetland resource area in the post-construction condition. So that's where we are, there's several mitigation opportunities out here um, beyond uh, just what we can afford in replication. This entire area is degraded and strife for opportunity to do invasive species management, to do some uh, native species plantings, to increase species diversity in here uh, for wildlife habitat values that are also aesthetic. Um, you know, we can load it full of shrubs of winterberry and spice bush and, and uh, um, plantings that, that would go through there. Um, we also want to look at the opportunity of whether or not uh, there's any trail connectivity to other um, town-owned parcels. There's the sewer line easement back here, which um, of course is prohibitions to having a trail directly over it. Like you're not going to pave it and turn it into a bike path. Um, but um, perhaps we can find uh, you know an easement along this. So I don't know if there's opportunity for connectivity between these. And just by, this is such a degraded site with a history of, um, um, uh, what was it, an oil business? Yes. We did, we, we did do phase one and phase one, the, the soils came back clean, but 
there's no stormwater treatment in the existing addition and all every time it rains anything here is sheet flowing into the wetlands with development it would come with modernized um, stormwater infrastructure designed to meet performance standards in accordance with the, the stormwater uh, management program. so it would it, it could theoretically represent an increase in water quality of water that's treated prior so to Becky, was your was your point that there were, I didn't measure this out there, that's not two to one location <coughs> area what I forget what the square footage of what? I mean I'm just looking at the red area and I'm looking at the area up there it looks like there's plenty of room for replication I mean right <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear that though I, I maybe are you proposing some kind of a replication of the wetland that you're feeling or you're just talking about enhancement of the existing we're both de degraded so combination so that's we, we do have the opportunity for wetland replication by I mean th this is the most uh, suitable area because it's it's a mound of fill it's peninsula surrounded by wetlands on all sides we can reduce the grade on that bring it down to tie in hydrologically to the surrounding area loam it um, and have a, a native wetland uh, restoration planting plant mm -hmm. that, that would go in this area I don't know surface area whether or not that meets the the two to one criteria um, we can always explore other opportunities but what I'm saying is that if we're not able to explicitly meet the two to one criteria it would be a balance of of offering all that we can in terms of replication and then more of a comprehensive mitigation plan in terms of restoration and other opportunities. I have, an, I have a, a zoning question, and I know it's not germane to wetlands, but the parking that you have um, over to the, the left, yeah, yeah, that's out of the zone, right? Yeah. And is that allowed? We'd have to, to make sure that, that that was possible with uh, the building department. Because it's part of this particular right. development right it's a, it's a gray area in the zoning definitely with regards to you know can you do ancillary mm. <clears throat> ancillary uses within the the not primary zone right it's black and white that the structure elements need to go up but associated purposes whether or not that's now that piece of it uh, and I'm just again for, is that within the is that line the 200 foot riparian zone yeah, there's a portion of the parking within the um, within the riverfront. Yep. So we we could explore relocating that out of uh, the riverfront. I mean, that's a degraded riverfront. At, at, at that point, it's part of the disturbed area. So um, we would balance all of that. And obviously, if we do impact, if we do have n new impact or n new um, disturbance within the riverfront would have to do an alternatives analysis if we mm -hmm. through the alternatives analysis find that we can relocate the parking out of that then that's what we do um, so that's it's not um, a critical point here obviously it's, yeah. it's putting the building down on top of the wetlands was right. why we're here so early so in accordance with the riverfront standards you have up to 5,000 square feet or 10 percent of the riverfront area located on site so I think that we are able to um, stay within the parameters of, of riverfront but again as Joe pointed out you it would require alternatives analysis which we would demonstrate efforts to avoid minimize and, and mitigate for in, any development in the riverfront what is that area just beyond the parking is that stormwater uh, is that a yeah rain garden where is the snow storage going to go um, probably down the end of the parking lot, either end of the parking lot. They come in, go right, and come in, go left, and go to the end. So, we, these yeah. points here, here. Oh, and there's going to be some sort of barrier there so they don't go straight into the rain garden when you get a guardrail or something. Yeah, guardrail. It'd, it'd be the stone apron, which is the um, the primary or the first part of the treatment, um, and the guardrail there would, would protect that. Sure. Uh, and then on the uh, historic fill, the, you're, you're talking about that peninsula and trying to find the rest of it. Uh, there's just so much fill out there. How come you just couldn't just peel it back until you met your two to one? What, what's the reluctance with, with getting more fill out is, there? Is, is, is there any constraints that we can't, I mean, because of this berm here, is, is just keep carving away and pulling things back. Yeah. Um, 
That's no, that's definitely a possibility. I mean, that's that's why we're I think here. They're leaving everything on the table to try to understand yeah. what we're doing. We don't, we're not utilizing that area, so certainly we can get in and, and reclaim it. Yeah, I, I mean, overall, I, I think I see it seems like in the back there you got a lot of room to, to make up the difference there uh, and, and and meet the right meet that that two to one ratio. And, and that's I would like to see that. I, I think I would still encourage some mitigation you know thought because there's still going to be a lot of structure with even within our municipal uh lines the 35 foot right. lines oh, and, and so yep. but if i mean it seems like you've got a lot of opportunity there to to do work i wouldn't be opposed yeah. to seeing we'd, something. we'd love to come up with a comprehensive mitigation package where you can look at it and feel comfortable saying this will have that benefit to the wellens my question <laughs> to members that have been on the commission a little bit longer um, and Chuck have we allowed mitigation two to one I mean that's part of our regulations isn't it what do you mean allowed two to one can you get if, if you're filling a wetland yeah if we allowed that on if a project have we in, in compensation for yeah. two to one not not by my memory um, zero so General Haverhill. So if we f filled in a wetland and then replaced a wetland two to one, Randall Road, the isolated wetland okay. that was at the right, right in the cul-de-sac. Okay. So they it, that was taken care of that way. Remember that. Oh, I thought I thought you were saying if they didn't meet the two to one. No, no, oh. no. I said oh, oh, oh. if you even allowed it. If we were asking for a, a variance or a waiver. And that's true of every conservation commission I've ever um, requested waivers for. It's that's that's certainly germane to any conversation. Is maintaining a standard across the board for anyone else that such that you can demonstrate that that prior prior findings, why they've they've been upheld and supported, and and basically setting a standard for the next guy that comes before you that says, I'd like to fill a wetland here, and they say. Why did you let the last guy do it, and why are you denying me a waiver? And no two projects are apples to apples. Every project is different. So we try to come through with, you know, um, several different layers of, of efforts to avoid, minimize, and mitigate, mitigation packages, um, you know, such that when the commission is faced six months from now with the next developer that comes in that wants to fill in a well, and you can say with a straight face, here's what the last guy had to go through and yeah. can you get to that level and, for and that standard you, yeah i think he's right you know no projects created equal i i think ultimately Randall road is a a just from a mindset of how we made those decisions was a good example right those were isolated wetlands that we didn't see a huge value in and so there we ended up with disturbing. a better connectivity with the the wetlands right that was that was yeah. by law that was just over 500 square feet but that's why i mentioned that this has historic house and a historic use here and i want you to bring that forward so when we do and if we do uh, allow this that we can say that it was previously disturbed and it wasn't pristine. So yep. that would that would be important yeah. to me, anyways. Yeah, I think that's an important piece of it. I, I think just what you said is, is correct. Agreed. It's, you know, yeah. the, the, we're looking about, but it's not just a, a, re a replacement in square footage, but we're talking about taking something that's near the road, up in this front area, that's already been disturbed, and potentially putting it back. There's still a foundation in that <laughs> <laughs> under, underneath all that. I mean, they left it there on purpose for not just to because they didn't want to disturb the wetlands. Uh, issue, yeah. Yeah. And, and talking about putting it in an area where back in the area where it, it, it could really use that and right. add more value. So I mean, I, I think it's the, the concept is there, you know, from my opinion. I think a lot of sites can't do it because they don't have the room or the place to the do opportunity. it. The opportunity. Oh no, and that's I, I I deal with clients with the same aptitude that have the. I, I have a guy in over who's been looking at a site for years, and he he just doesn't have the opportunity for mitigation on his property to, to, to give back. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah, I, I circumstantial. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a unique situation in which this is a highly degraded site with the oil business there for years, and it's been it's been um, mistreated, if you will, from an environmental standpoint. So there's there's an opportunity. We wouldn't. The reason we're we're here so early and uh, although Mr. Pennington has spent quite a bit of money on survey and, mm -hmm. and, and the, the due diligence, we haven't got into the full design because we 
we, you don't ask this question every day of, of every conservation commission, but I think there's a great opportunity here. I think, I think one of your challenges, I guess, might be what you, what you find with the environmental assessment. Right now, we, we did do the phase two, so they did go out and do so soil samplings and groundwater samplings, and we're-, we're So it came out clean? Fairly, we're clean. There's no, nothing that exceeds the, the thresholds in which that we would have, if we did peel back that fill and had obviously have to then remove that, we're not looking at exorbitant costs of uh, disposal of that soil. So that's a, actually a, a good thing because we can put money towards the restoration, the plantings, the you know those other other things that in the end will um, serve to to put forth a, a, a better wetland system. Well, and, and ultimately, if if there were impacts in the back there, you'd be looking to not dig it up because of the cost and and limit exposure. So uh, I think that helps support some you know changes to the back there and, and work in the back and. Excavation and regrading. So, could you could you talk a little bit more about the environmental assessment and what was what was sampled and where you looked for impacts? Just as a just an overview. The study was done by by Ransom yep. um, Consulting. So they had done they had done a, a phase one. Um, and they, you know, there was there was definitely enough questions there that they they wanted they recommended that they move to a, a phase two. So phase one ISI initial site assessment. Yes. Investigation. That, that's the location of, of some of the the sampling that they did. Um, several borings, and then sent sent out for uh, laboratory testing. Um, I'm not an environmental scientist, so I can't speak to no, it no, directly, no. but be happy to share. Yeah, the, I'm, curious, I'm curious to see it. I mean, I, I've, got a, I, I've got a, I've got a copy here, I can, I can leave it. Um, okay. and I can return it in one piece. No, no, I've, it's, it's, <laughs> I've got it electronically, so, so it's, it's okay. yours. We also included in here the, uh, the geotechnical report that we did under the proposed building site just to make sure that any fill that was there was, was not going to be another problem from, a, from yeah. a cost standpoint. So what, Would it be, instead of just getting the copy, would it be okay if we just got the electronic version? Could you, yeah. we have it already? No, I can do that. Oh, good, great. Just so you can keep your, yeah. yeah. a lot of cost to publish. Any other questions from the commission members? Yeah, I, I and one more question. So uh, I guess, you know, all, all these sites and, and maybe the over, uh, one of the one of the umbrella policies of, of Reading and the planning department, the conservation department, is this connectivity thing with the, with the walking path or the bike trail or whatever it ends up being. So I hope you look into that and see if some connection between Cross Street and this uh, Main Street and it can work somehow. Is there a place so, check? So uh, how, how are they going to get across that? It's because it, you have to connect it over the wetland. We just need an easement, so you know, <coughs> asking them to build a, a boardwalk. I don't know what it looks like, but but the the concept is that when people come in and they're willing to do it, we accept these things because someday they'll all be connected. All so we need is five right. trail committees. Yeah, it's just part of we'll part of the package. <laughs> so I can go to. Um, so, Chuck, you said the interest would be you're looking into anything but uh, some sort of connection to Cross Street. Well, there's a there's a um, a dirt road. I guess it's a what is it? It's an uh, access road to the. Why don't we just issue an order of conditions? Or Shackleford. Shackleford. No, Cross cr Cross Street. Yeah. And. And there's a little stream, and then oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a dirt path. Okay. I don't know how far it goes. Into the wetland behind Cross Street, on the right, behind all the houses. 
there's the road, and I'm just gonna just go straight through. But whatever, you know. Just as a consideration. All along the easement. Mm -hmm. so that's what. Mm, yeah. You know, what is it going to save? It's going to save a lot of walking. Yeah, I, I think that's. It's, it's definitely something that we can we can work through it at minimum easements and uh, most it's something. Incorporating that into the into the planning, um, you know, if we move that parking out to the other side, then can connect that into the sidewalk system, so I can envision a sidewalk that comes up to the parking lot and then transitions into a walking path that goes out back and, and then hits the sewer easement and runs along that. To, to yeah, well, I'll keep that sewer easement clear if people are using it because when they grow in, it becomes such a Jurisdictional nightmare. Sure. Yeah. Maintenance nightmare too. So yeah, that was that's what I was hoping for. Um, I should mention the tree policy. Yeah. So we have a we have a tree policy. It's based on one to one replacement. We ask for uh, you either plant trees or you. Um, you either plant the trees or you pay for each tree. As a developer, you're responsible for every single tree, but you can ask for a waiver. And I actually calculated your fees, so I don't know if you were if the waiver was coming for that or not. Um, so that's a <coughs> big number with the trees, a big number with the with the regulations. I mean, just uh, temporary or permanent impacts in those zones. Here. Yeah, pretty significant number. I should think that from the one-to-one -one replacement standard that we would have several opportunities just within uh, any wetland enhancement restoration plan to plant native trees within any area that we restore. Yeah. In addition to shrub species or basis ground cover, there's um, native seed mixes that we could apply. But the subsequently, I think that we have a you lot of our shrubs and trees. So you have great opportunity to do that as long as they're native. It's just something to keep in mind when you're, when you're looking at it. Some people come in and they just... The, you're blindsided by it or you have well, to we'll consider we'll, it. We'll do the, make sure we do the inventory of the, tr the trees that we have to take down. Yeah. Oh yeah, and planning will ask for the same thing, so you definitely have those that inventory. I'm accustomed to doing those. Where I'll usually go out and just locate any trees greater than, say, 6 inch DBH, and I'll identify them by species and diameter. We ask for 4. Um, but 4 inch? Yeah. Okay, yep, that's fine. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is that uh, these things aren't separate. So you could do enough mitigation to request uh, a waiver from the tree policy and then just have your regular planting plan. So you can pull more. I mean, I, I would think that would be a, the best bang for this area if you pulled more of that fill out and, you know, in compensation for the trees that were coming down or something like that. That would would be interesting. I, I would agree, and it seems like, again, I mean, we're not doing areas, but you, I look at the red area, I look at the area back there, it seems like you've got a lot to work with, so, you know, it, it's just, you know, I think the, the more we can maximize uh, some increased wetland at that area, I, I think is going to be better versus just, oh, well, we'll replace this tree with a, a you know, something new. And, right. and that was, in and our assessment of the site was that there's a lot of degraded area and a lot of opportunity yeah. for, for mitigation, compensatory mitigation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask a question about the temporarily impacted wetland area. Yeah. Um, what type of activity, what type of activity would be happening in that area? Like just what, what kind of temporary impacts are we talking about? We're just talking staging for, for the construction of the wall. So it would just be um, setting the base, setting the, the base. We, what we've been doing mostly in situations like this is uh, is gravity block walls. So you need to clear the area beyond the wall, say four feet beyond the wall, uh, the front face of the wall. Excavate approximately 12 inches down. Set the set the stone base for that, and they start putting the gravity blocks in from there. 
then once the wall is in, we could backfill that front face of the wall, the wetland side of the wall, loam it, and vegetate it so that we can bring, we can basically create the wetland. What's, what is the footing for the gravity block wall? Is that just crushed stone or something? It's like just that? crushed stone, yeah. You usually, you know, the blocks are 16 inches high and the forest course gets about yeah. half buried. It's the same as uh, 364 Lowell Street, if you see that wall that's out there. I don't know where else they've done it. <laughs> any, any other questions? I think um, that was, I think it actually is an improvement to this area. Um, it's been kind of abandoned and yeah. abused for several years. It needs improvement. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think you've uh, thought about this pretty thoroughly mm -hmm. and I appreciate your coming in and Actually, talking to us. Yeah, I think you've got a compelling story, uh, you know, of, of what's out there today, what you can and what you can do. So. No, it's just, uh, Mr. Rooney just wanted, you know, to, to get the feedback and to get a general acceptance. I know that this is just informal, but now he's got to put the property under harder agreement um, and start to spend some some additional monies to to design and work through planning and, and pay the pay, pay fees and all right. that. So right. I just didn't want to go down that road to to, to come to this You're conclusion. You're roadblocking this say, No, no, no. no. We would not, never allow you to fill that. Not, what the know, hell were you thinking? <laughs> that's what we're looking for. Just you're in the gas business. <laughs> High level feedback in terms of do, do you have, is there a permitting avenue or is it just completely dead in the water? Yeah. I mean that's for invest money. Because we did. We we also thought there was a compelling argument here that, that this this <coughs> mode not every day something something that we propose every day that there, there was there's some some merit here. Well, <laughs> we certainly appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Good luck. I think it was good seeing you again. Did you work on um, Hudson Gas and Electric for us? I did, yeah. You did a um, rare... Rare species for, right. yeah, yeah uh, purple plant. milkweed. Yeah, that's all right. Purple that's milkweed, I yeah. And I, you actually found some out there, Yeah. which is great. Yeah, that was rewarding. I still have photographs from, uh, yeah, the, the purple milkweed <laughs> studies for Hudson Gas and Electric. David, do you, you, re you retire from Tetra Tech? Oh, thanks. Yes, yes, I did. Oh, that's great. How are... Uh, a lot of old people still there. Uh, yeah, some of the yeah. folks that um, yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I understand that uh, Lisa Carrozza went on to Stantec. Oh, did she? Okay. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I maintain a friendship with Keith Hannon. He moved out to the West Coast, worked for Bureau of Land Management, recently came back, and he was just hired at BSC Group. So okay. he's he's back in Massachusetts. So small world that it is. I know. Yeah, it is. yeah. It was very good seeing you. Nice to see you. Thanks. Take care, guys. Thank you. So, uh, old and new business continued. Um, so, I have on there a town meeting article to transfer two millet parcels to the Conservation Commission. This is a, uh, I have just, it seems like I'm trying to figure out who to talk to about this. I know Julie sent an email to Bob, and, and we're waiting to hear if Bob LaLashore is the person to talk to and bring this forward. That's great. But I know that um, the chair was, and the you know, tonight the chair is going to have to work with maybe the liaisons uh, to to talk about this and find out how this process happens. I, I'm not sure. One of the questions we asked, um, I guess Bob and Jean and 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 Julie was, could I have? Uh, could I communicate directly with the liaisons and with a question like this, just to say, how do, how do we do this? What's the process? So I could come to the commission and tell you guys, but we haven't got the answer. So if the, right. if the chair would take that on or, or the new chair or whoever I would take that, that on, it would be great. I actually, I actually spoke with Bob Belasher and, and uh, John Halsey during town day about this specifically, mm -hmm. about bringing it forward. And Bob said that it's something that was an oversight was something that should have been taken care of many years ago. Yeah, um, everyone to, agrees on that. Yep. And, and he said that uh, um, the town solicitor was going to have to work on to 
wording and and get he has to get involved with that. Okay. But they're both aware of it and uh, um, uh, they were going to bring it up at one of the the meetings coming forward. So maybe who's the solicitor? Um, Ray Miaris. Yeah. Don't we have a meeting about this in August? Well, we have a meeting. You can add this to your list this of things you want to talk about. This but could be August. Well, don't we want to do this sooner? Yeah, because it has to be on warrant, and I think the warrant closes on the beginning of September. Plus, it's, yeah, the warrant closes, but everything has to be ready. So whatever the legal time right. to decipher what we want to do has to be added into that time frame. So sooner rather than later. And so I could send, I mean, it's not a problem you send Bob an email. I could say this is what the commission, if you would direct me to yeah. do that, I would send Bob an email yeah. saying, you know, how do we how do we proceed with this? We want to try to make sure that it's on the, the upcoming uh, warrant. So we. So my understanding is somebody, some entity or whatever, has to write the warrant. Right? That's, yeah, I think right. we're hearing that that's the solicitor that's the, or the town attorney. And it's the attorney has to work on that first, but then also the FinCom has to get involved in also. Why? Approving some kind of well, I think this is going to be in a cost associated with this because the, the town solicitor is going to be in it, and then there's a transfer of deed. So they have. That's what I was told that they also have to be a part of it as well. Yeah. So so, so that kind of information is just great. So if I could have yeah. just you know had all that and distributed it to the commission, you would know if we're talking about this fall town meeting yeah. or spring. So it sounds like everyone, all the. The people that need to say yes, we want to do this, have agreed that yes, they have to do it. It's just the, the, the protocol to get it actually begun and, and get it on the warrant for the, the fall town meeting. All right, so. Uh, well, so the solicitor is Ray, what's his last name? Yaris. I recommend we ask Charles. Uh, Charles. Mm -hmm. Charles. Chuck. My official name. I'm Charles. Writing an email to Bob, the town manager. I might as well. Robert. I'll talk to Robert. <laughs> Tom Chef. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think you should go ahead and feel free to talk to Chuck. I, I talked to Bob. I mean, ultimately, I also just think, I mean, I don't know what everybody else thinks. Just with th this stuff in general, I mean, who's, whose rule is it that <coughs> you as the administrator here couldn't talk to our, our selectman liaison? Uh, you had said don't something know, previously. Don't know, but I, I was told you that couldn't. I couldn't, uh, uh, that we don't have direct discussions. And I think, did, Nika, didn't you look at the uh, regular, uh, the bylaw? Well, there was a law? policy yeah, that was a policy. you could Probably. as long as you CC'd yeah. the town manager on it, but I... Yeah, I have to look at that again. I anyway, I, like I said, I had the discussion I don't think it was during town day with the town outside manager. Outside the realm. I mean, it just seems like who else would know how to do this? I mean, Bob yeah. obviously knows yeah. how to do it, and then the select board would I definitely know how to do it. Exactly. Yeah. I think the, like, the more we can just have a straight line of communication is going to speed this up. Because like you said, I feel like I just keep on hearing that. Oh yeah, we need to do that. We need to do that. Yeah. But That's nobody knows the direction that we need to go, yeah. or, or what's the kind next step. Kind of a rubber is. stamp process. Everyone's and in agreement, but it's just initiating the the proper procedures and protocols that have to be put in place to get it started. Yeah, it's like it's like <laughs> you know you you have this balloon and your ears in the balloon, and you just have to let it go. And but you want to track it. You want to find out where it is. So like this direct line of communication is different from this, you know, letting the balloon go. It would be light, nice to know to send something out or to work on the, the first draft of the article and then present that and then be able to follow up on it. You know, is this good enough to get on this town? You know, to get some feedback to, to, to be more involved in the process because it does directly, it's, it's going to be conservation land. Mm -hmm. The other parcels that are out there are conservation land. Um, I mean, no, honestly, I could care less if it becomes or isn't become because we have the ability to do what we want. The, the select board uh, has granted us, like, care and custody of it, you know, but uh, to correct what was, I mean, there are trails committee members and other people in town that think that this should be straightened out. So that's that. Um, the next thing was um, 
there's a Howard Street, there's an invoice for Howard Street. And I need an approval to pay it. Did we do the other two order of conditions and determination of applicability? Fairchild and Arcadia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did? No. Yeah. So, Chuck, are we just bouncing around? Um, I'm going down the list. Did we do the order of conditions for Doppler? No. I was just I was going down this list. So you skip. I figured I could do it in about five minutes, and then you can go back up to the top. So I was correct. You you. Keep bouncing around. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Let it be known, all the good people in Reading, I have been bouncing around on the agenda. Forty lashes, I think, would be appropriate. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> May I continue with my bounce, or would you want to swing back up to the top? Go ahead. It's vacation. I have a Horsley and Witten. Uh, glad we went through that. I have a Horsley and Witten invoice for three thousand and four hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, it's there's about um, and that's for the site inspection review of the notice of intent written analysis working session and the hearing uh, the hearing attendance for one so we're prepaying for that first hearing attendance okay. but it seems reasonable there they thought they were going to be here by now and we've been pushing them off because the applicant is uh, considering their options based on the summary they got from Horsley and Witten. Yeah, okay. So can I have a motion to uh, approve to approve the $3,450 check written to Horsley and Witten? So moved. Can, before we, can I just add, is the uh, applicant potentially going to have an issue that we're paying them for a meeting that they haven't attended yet? Uh, I don't we, think so. Well, we already approved to have this, this site review anyway, and they were here and they approve it has to happen I mean yeah. it's not going to be it, no matter what way they go you know left right turn off of their original plan at some point we have to discuss no, no, that, no, that, no, that, that, that yeah. Yeah. yeah they need to come in and talk about it do I hear a second second all those in favor 113 Arcadia Ave, um, just telling you that there's a reference number for the conservation restriction. We allow the family to, uh, we sign the occupancy and they're in there and lo and behold, I haven't heard a damn thing about the uh, <laughs> conservation restriction since then, but um, uh, you know, hopefully the estate has it and, uh, uh, and it's moving forward. There was supposed to be the last correspondence I got from um, the state was that they were looking for the revised plan, which was something we had, so it must have been pretty easy to get that to the state. And then I'll leave the last item for last and move back up to order of conditions for 128 Fairchild, map 45, lot 2, Doppler. What? Uh, I can't remember if this was closed and issued or just closed at the last meeting. Because it was just closed, wasn't it? It was just closed because there were some things that, um, you know, it was just kind of pro forma yeah. things that had to be Motion changed. to continue, right. So we're, we're going to have to close and issue tonight. Did they come in as a minor modification and it got changed? No, it's a minor modification. I that. Yeah, I think that is continued. Yeah. So, but there was a couple of minor things that they had to get the view on. So, they sent in their variance request that includes the. Um, is, this, is this it you just gave us tonight? Well, well, that was that for 128? 128 Fairchild Drive. Yes. It's June 10th, dated June 10th, 2019. It was handed out at the last meeting. No. Yeah, they came to the last meeting and they handed, handed out stuff. Oh. And then yeah. oh, okay. I, they also, you also and then I sent it out, but 
Do some, another one to, tonight? No, I put that on your yeah. desk tonight, yeah. Right. So when I read this, it refers to North Reading. Yeah. I know, they, they missed, they had some typos. Yeah, but there's section 3D4. And no foundations, including da 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 da, shall be permitted within 10 feet of the ZNV. It's not ours. Yeah, because it's not uh, running wetland protection regulations. That was one of the things I pointed out to the guy when he was here the last time. Say not Is this the Stella one? Work. Is this the one with the retaining wall? Yes. 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 This one. Yeah. The, the small retaining wall and then the deck. So what, we decided to continue at the last meeting? Continue it. Yeah, we continued. We did continue it. Because we wanted, we we wanted to review and sign. Right. Review the order of condition and sign. At this meeting. So I know Thor sent me uh, another email tonight. Who's that? Thor is the, yeah, he's the engineer. Williams and Sparages. So he had sent uh, another email tonight that had the variance request in it. I don't know if he would have uh, changed it. It seems like that was brought up at the last meeting. If you look at I don't know if it made it to the minutes. Well, I mean, is, is he actually referring to the wrong? Is it just a mistake in the town, or is it a mistake in the, the regulation? Uh, no, it was a mistake. Well, on, on the last paragraph on the other side, um, it says, please accept this letter as a formal request for a waiver to allow the construction of the wall and grading within the 25 and 35 foot offset to the wetland resource areas. He's got it kind of right there. It's just the reference to North Reading and then some of it just seems off. But I think. But, but he sent, on June 17th, he sent a replacement where he corrects the North Reading and puts in Reading. Which one? You want to take a look at it? When did we, we get it? Did we get it? Chuck sent it on the 20th. As an email? We get that by email. Oh, okay. So if you want to see it. Yeah, I do. Which includes it's the right deck here. construction and the so 25 it's, foot. It looks the same. Just go ahead and scroll down if you want. On this, this is a, this is, no, this is oh, the landscaper. Oh, okay. No, that's that's a different company. Uh, just one, one letter difference. Ten feet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay, I got it. <coughs> Pick that up. Satisfied. All right. Okay. Do I hear a motion to close? One twenty eight Fairchild Drive. I move we close one twenty eight Fairchild Drive. DP number two seventy dash seven one eight. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Do I hear a motion to issue? I make a motion that can issue. Order conditions NOI 270 718 128 Fairchild Drive. A second. All those in favor? Great. Dave, did, uh, did you prepare? Yeah, I did. Lot 5, do you have that over there? Just wondering, did we sign that or do I need to find that? Okay. Yeah. So that's signed. Yeah, with the pictures. 
Just yeah. Just want to make sure that. Will you? I just wonder if you were looking through it to find where you had this on. No, no. Uh, I, I was looking through. I, I don't remember s seeing it. No. You know what? I apologize. No one saw these. But okay. It, at the end of the day, it's it is straight. I just wanted to see if it was the straightforward version of like. We're the, not asking for yeah. uh, you know money. Uh, we're not asking for a bond. That's that's what I went to look. Yes. Just get the red pen. Leave that at home now. From now on. I got it from here. Where did, where did you learn this? No, it never signed with red pen. Sorry. Oh. You are signed it? It's all right. No more red pens. <laughs> the trash pile. Millennial. That's why it's left, it was left there. I had to work with what I had. So the de determination of applicability for Arcadia. So who was that for? Steinberger, Steinbruggen, Steinbruggen. Oh. This was wasn't this an IDA, and we already had a negative determination last meeting. No. Well, the, yeah, the we voted, Doppler yeah, had we a the negative determination. Yes. A no, negative. Steinbruggen. Yes. Oh, sorry. So. We're just here to sign, to sign it. it. Oh. When okay. it's an old new business, it's usually just to sign it. Is that what's going on? Is that on? what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is it? Are you reading that from the notes? I mean, no, from I just the see it was. It, it says determination of applicability. Well, I just thought we were coming back around again. No, no, we're signing. Negative determination. Okay. We're ready to sign. Mm -hmm. That was a. Uh... Here's that one. If you want to. That wasn't even there. I'll uh, move that one. Yeah, usually if there's a quorum, yeah, it's, it's not a problem. No, I probably would have given up. That was Ken, when he comes back around, yeah. oh, is, he, is that, that going to happen? Okay. Yeah, because he wants to get in that 25 feet. Good. Yeah, that's I'll, I'll save it for them then. <laughs> yeah. That's it, right? You got that? Oh, there you go. Do you want to save the discussion and vote for the chair for last? Because I can just go through the administrator's report, just uh, more of an update. Sure. Sure. So um, the foundations at 118 Eaton Street, uh, the Lakeview 40B project, uh, those permits were signed. And then we they want to also start the wall. But the engineer, uh, the building department has asked them to actually sub submit some additional plans because the wall and I, it came up in our meeting many times that we needed details about these the wall and they said they would get to it and they would address that from building the building department called them out on it where they didn't know the size of the footing based on the height of the wall and it, it wasn't shown on the plan so uh, Glenn Redmond brought that up so they're going to be providing that and at that same DRT meeting I asked them to make sure that they and Thor who it, was the representative here for the project last uh, at last meeting? He actually is the environmental monitor. So I, I told them that I had, since they started, which in my recollection was about two and a half months, I didn't receive. I only received one 
environmental monitoring report, and there should have been three. Yeah. So uh, I told them that I would tie on all my additional uh, sign-offs or any kind of moving forward with the permits to receiving those. I was supposed to get a hold of Thor. I thought he was going to be here tonight, but uh, he called me at the last minute and said he wasn't going to show up. So it's something I have to do next week just to make sure that we're on the same page, what needs to be reported on, and when he should be out there. But uh, I, I think it does need to be said that we had a little bit of difficulty on Veterans Way also with the same Williams and Sparagis group about getting environmental reports from them. Uh, and I, then we all tied it to another sign-off. And I think I received six months at once, which isn't how it's supposed to happen. Veterans Way, was Veteran, that? Well, they were just here tonight. Oh, okay. What's the other, isn't Williams Sparagis also doing... The one where your buddy there. You're doing Doppler, my buddy. Um, I don't have to. Should be careful because. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I should be careful. Yeah. Your buddy from yeah. that one. Uh, who's the the? I mean, who did the, the delineation? So they did Doppler. One? So it's um, so Greg Hockmith is a seasoned wetland yeah. scientist, and he did the delineation, I believe, out there at uh, 128 uh, Fairchild, which is Doppler, and. Uh, Veterans Way was done by also Lowell Street. Greg Hockmith. Lowell Street, 364 Lowell Street, done by Bill Manuel, and so yes. was Eaton Street. But the Eaton Street uh, Corporation didn't retain Bill to bring the project forward, and now it's being handled under the umbrella of Williams and Sparagis, probably under Thor and, and uh, Greg Hockmith. Okay. But, but Williams Sparagis was on that Lowell so Street one, right? Even if they weren't doing the, the environmental monitor? Williams monitor. and Stratus was not on 364 Lowell Street. Okay. I don't know why I thought that was... So it's the association with Bill Manuel. Yeah. He was yeah, but Beth, I thought that because Bill Manuel did the, the delineation originally for Eaton. Yeah. And he, did, yeah. uh, he also did the one for Green Street. So Bill Manuel worked on Green Street, just up the street, the two-family house. So yeah, two, that's right. Two, and and that's so that's right. why he was associated with the, the fedoras. And... Um, then he moved over to Eaton Street, Lakeview and Eaton on the 40B, and then, then, then they got into the bigger companies. So, um, I, I guess that's a, a good example. Uh, I only think of 364 Lowell because I, I felt like you said they were keeping on top of the reports that they were required to give you. That's a, a good example of this. This is how you're supposed to do it, guys. Don't give, it, don't give me 60 at one time. Point yeah, there's something going on there though, where there, it was like the last thing they were thinking about. And John, uh, John Tilton, you know, when we were working on Eric's greenhouse, which is now Artist Senior Living, yeah. he was he was on top of that. So it's right. I, you know he's right. I guess he's got people under him now. He's now. been promoted, <laughs> yeah, but he was on top of that so much. So we should got back to that, which was great. They would come in, you wouldn't have to call. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, 113 Arcadia. There's a new issue out there um, to storage tanks that we approved for the back. The, the oil company, or the gas company, is saying they're small and they probably are not an adequate size to for the house, for the size of the house and for the heat loss and all that I calculation. I that house. It's huge. You seen it? Uh, yeah, because I went by to see Chuck. I went by to see the retaining wall. So they want. They'll be coming in at some point to talk about additional re, uh, storage options, but they had a tank in the ground in the front of the house, and I guess they decided that that wasn't ideal because they whatever the top of it sticks out, that wasn't ideal. Now they have the back of the house, but they're really pinched to be in that maintenance area. You know, between the house and the and the and the twenty five foot line, which is where the erosion control was. So that is still that Hopefully like cold winter. Certificate of compliance has not been issued. That order is still in effect. So they can come back with a minor modification of our plan, show it and and put that in. I just think that they they're you know, they're, what they wanted to do is they wanted to move in, they wanted to 
you know, do some other things and they'll, they'll come back. But I expect it prior to the certificate of compliance process. And I also expect the owner to be running that process because I think the builder wants to be you know, done. I'm not sure, but that's my, my thought on it. <coughs> what ever uh, happened with DEP and the three trees that they wanted to take out additionally? Did that ever go through? Every, uh, they finally got their approval from DEP, but the, the, house you know, was the, yeah, the house was in the way and yeah. you know all that. Actually, how does how does that work with a minor plan and the fact that DEP is this, is this the one that DEP is going to site? Yeah. yeah. So can we even approve anything? We can approve it. We can approve a minor plan. Yeah, I just have to let um, uh, what's his name. Mr. Thornberry, no. <laughs> our, our local DEP representatives yeah. know that we're going to be approved. Okay. I thought it was essentially all decisions were out of our hands at this point because. No, no, no. We no. are totally in charge issue, of our bylaw the issue side. The but. No, you always. They don't right. take over the bylaw part. Yeah. Right. right. So we but have so to approve. Um, and then they have to approve. Yeah. Oh, but I'm not saying we have to approve first. And they, they can approve, and we can say no, and then it never happens. Yeah. Got right. It. And vice versa, I guess. And sometimes when that happens, the applicant then appeals. Yep. We got. So uh, I got um, Ryan Brickett. He contacted me a couple weeks ago and he said he was on his final uh, cleanup for the site and this Eagle Scout project, which is at the Pinevale Conservation Area, which is great. His same scout troop has adopted Pinevale, and we're hoping to have better trails, unobstructed trails, and maybe in the future some boardwalks that so people can use it year round. I was also hoping that there would be. Uh, a small loop trail that was not officially ADA compliant, but at least walkable, wide enough, flat, that that um, people could walk there without having to hop over trail or hop over, you know, from hummock to hummock when it gets wet. So uh, that's the list. There are no emergency permits. There, there was a bill. We took care of that. We're down to the minutes. I reviewed it. I did too. I didn't see anything. Um, I have a couple of amendments to the minutes, but I can hand them to you. They're minor. Okay. I wasn't there, so I got nothing to say. Make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, 6 12 19. Yeah, as amended. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? All those abstain? All right. So tonight, our last item on the agenda is bittersweet. We're at a point each year where we have to say goodbye to, well, not goodbye, but we have to check <laughs> the metal that our vice chair and chair are made of, whether they want to take on their responsibility for another job and if anyone wants to step in. I hear from the chair that she might, she has something to say about this prior to any vote commencing? Well, I already talked to a couple of our members <laughs> yesterday. If anybody, <laughs> for uh, cir you know, good circumstances, they are not available. So, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, so we're, we're looking for a chair and a vice chair. We have to vote once a year to either mm -hmm. extend. Yeah, no, I don't know what, you, what do you mean? Yeah, I know. That was very cryptic. <laughs> it's, like, it's okay. <laughs> um, Thanks, Carl. So. Hear more about that. <laughs> well, you're going to tell, I mean, Becky's been doing it for like two, two years, two and a half, right? Because you took two over and halfway half through. years. Yeah. And, you know, she's you know, a good person. Yeah. You know, flowery, bubbly personality. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Is this so intelligent? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you get away with it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was chuckling. But she's she's uh, 
she's uh yeah she's yeah it's good it's, it's yeah, a good run and she's ready to time. yeah she's yeah you know uh yeah, yeah and so uh <laughs> as someone that's been on the trip for a while uh, you know it, it's uh I, I well generally we like to have you know cycle people up i talk to Becky about this. I am certainly not stepping up this time for to become chair. Um, I've got some family obligations that are coming. Pending. Yeah, any any <laughs> second soon. now. Uh, I, baby. I've oh. got a baby due July 4th. Oh, well, oh my before. god. I, I say July 4th because that's habit. Uh, it's not going to be any later than Saturday. So. Wow. Um, Congratulations. So next, this next year is probably going to be James Cagney. So. Two? Two? Yeah. Number two. Wow. But I welcome any other people that'd be interested to Katrina Savastano. These are Dave, the Dave has some issues it's coming up. June 29th is the reality. Yeah, I had a discussion with Becky, and I have uh, in a week and a half, I'm having the first of my two right. knee replaced. And uh, so I <coughs> I really couldn't uh, take on the, the mantle of the, the, uh, the chair because I know that I'm going to have some significant time that I'm going to have to be away. So. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Becky also talked to me and <laughs> thanked me for my service and said that in all of her years, she had really never worked with one of someone of my caliber. <laughs> I appreciate that, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> it's good we're being transparent right now. This is really good. Yeah. Is there anybody else want to share? <laughs> I've been, this is my third stint. Oh. I was on the commission in the 80s, late 80s. In Reading? Yes. Oh, wow. In 2005 to maybe seven, and this yeah. is the third time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd like to see somebody else come forward. You know, because, <laughs> yeah, well, Can we just quote Bobby and Dipset? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be rich. That would be. I, think, I mean, I think she's done a great job as chair. I wouldn't mind voting her chair again. I, I don't want to put myself out there as chair right now. Um, that was my third. That's gonna be my third conversation. I mean, I think I've carried that mantle for a while. And, yeah. How and long were you? How long did you do it? Long time. You did it two years when we first started, and then, and then you've been vice chair for a long time. So I think it was two, maybe more. I'm not sure, but it was at least two it's because I remember. Huh. Uh, really? <laughs> How comfortable would you feel? Kyle's like really. Um, I don't know if I wouldn't. I would not feel comfortable. I would feel uncomfortable with just my lack of experience. I mean, it's it's not about. It's not necessarily the person with the most tenure that should be chair. It's yeah. just about running a meeting. But I don't about mean tenure. I mean experience, like what to look for, what to ask for, the meeting even. I mean, I still feel like I'm kind of grasping even. That's, that's fine. I've only come a year. This isn't my year just now. That's fine. Well, <laughs> to be honest, I'm just trying to be honest. Just yeah. 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 She's like, so why don't... Uh, so yeah, it's a difficult situation. I mean, I, I mean, I think that it makes me realize that we need to not only talk about we, we need a, another member mm -hmm. to to round this out, and maybe some associate members also to to help us out. Um, that wouldn't help with the chair and vice chair no. and associate members or non-voting members, but um, but to have that that in the wings works out. I'm not sure how that process works. But I know that uh, isn't uh, Andy Friedman now one of the uh, no? no no John Halsey and the woman uh, Melissa uh, Alvarado no, no 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 who was it Ann Landry Ann Landry. Landry yep Ann Landry and Halsey are well, and Halsey is our Dave no, 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 I'm not asking about so who reviews the applicants that want to get on a meeting. On that's committee. anybody. No, 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 there's two people yeah. first, and then the whole select board there's looks at it. There's two people, but you don't know Six who those two people are. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's it doesn't, it's, it's you know what they're, yeah, it's not the liaisons. They just pick the committee. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so there should be seven, seven I think. I don't think you're officially yeah, on that committee. Four, five, six. Because whoever interviewed me was two more. Oh, so there's each person. Each oh, so we just are a different short. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, Bob, no, I was Bob it was and two a member of the select board. Two select yeah. board right. members. Yeah, two, two interviews. With one, actually. 
I agree. <laughs> so what do we do? What do we do check. We hold like a uh, tea stand, lemon lemonade stand, and recruit. Yeah, we could recruit. Because I was just asking um, Dave, there should be one seven, member yeah, so two seven members is seven. Deal. One member is two, two, two associates. Two so we are short. Yeah, six. We are. We're short. We're short a person. We're short one person. Have, how long? I mean, I've been on now for you. How long have we ever? We've been on four years. I think so. Because I renewed. I think it was a. Three years. I don't know. It seems like a year term. So, so when I. Sorry, my life away. Came, yeah, when I came on, Anika was chair. Right. And I well, I mean, it has to be exactly when because I think it was like two right. meetings later that Brian became chair. So this right. Um, right. And then Brian left halfway through. And you've been chair ever since, yeah. so maybe three years. We just finished. Like yeah. This is how long I've been. Right. With the, um, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't think we've ever had seven members. Yeah. Uh, Once, didn't we? Yes, we, we did. did. We did. I think you filled it the seventh member spot. No, Amy Skatani. Sk eh. But Bobby wasn't. Bob. Bobby. She wasn't, but we had Amy. It's like I already have a kid. Trust me. It's like I'm already in that. I'm not sleeping. Charles and Bobby. Bobby over there. <laughs> wasn't on the committee yet. <laughs> no, no, we had Al Cugliard, but Amy Chic Chicatini made the seventh. Remember? Right. For a very short time. Right. But we did have seven members. So I could watch my baby. My wife could come. We could. That'd be two. We could seven. Well, maybe. Uh, <laughs> not that it matters, but um, maybe his child could be the vice chair. <laughs> She could hold the, the gavel. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> oh, so what to do? Hmm. Well, it could be like a rudderless ship. <laughs> I mean, all it takes is. Okay, I will Some sort continue of cool as the chair reluctantly. <laughs> I nominate. So why don't we back uh, along, Lake? Yeah. Thank you. Are there ways you can delegate more? Do you this, do you this year? Yeah, I I, I, I don't mind. I don't. <clears throat> I don't have a hard time running the meeting except a few people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think it would be anybody. Um, I do spend a lot of time on site visits mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And and that's and I mean that's. And, not so much behind the scenes, but I do, you know, to me that stuff is, that site visit is important. Mm -hmm. It always has been. There yes. are other commissions that don't even go mm -hmm. on site visits. Um, because, you know, again, you know, from my perspective, it, that's, that's exactly it is. You know, I, I don't know that I have an issue, would have an issue running a meeting. It's it's the the consistency in the site visits over the next year. Is, I, I'm not sure right. where I'm going to be at. Um, but if there's ways that we can help take that, you know, if there are things to... to oh, I've got one. <laughs> Wants to take on... Uh, you've already started with Bob Lillisher and talking to him about the uh, ma ma mallet. Mallet conservation. Yeah. You know, but you're kind of going to be out of, the, out of the scene for a while. A little bit, yep. Yeah. But well, I can still I mean, do anything with, the, with that just by phone calls and things like that. I can follow up. Now let's see where that goes. Get He's going to be dying to make phone it. calls when he's sitting around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you to you want to write some policies for us, too? <laughs> yeah. Oh. You might not want to look, look at the verbiage I might use. <laughs> hey. I, don't know. You know, I don't know how the parameters exactly work, but if there's other delegations or phone calls or meetings, I mean, anything pre 7.30 a.m. and post 4 p.m. I mean, I could try to... Carl, I don't do think you're out of it yet. So this vice chair coming up next, all right? <laughs> and you said you didn't feel oh. like you had enough experience What's the, to be do chair. Wanna, do you want to stay vice? What do you I, want? I, I, are we going to have, have a fight here? Oh, yeah, right now. Oh. No, no, no. I, I think like I'm a voting, like a frenzy. The way yeah, flag. Well, I think the vice chair would be in line for the chair, and what I'm hearing is that you're not. Look, if, I, if I'm you're not looking to go if, to the chair if position. If I'm needed, if I'm needed to fill the role, I, you know, I'll, I'll you be there. Do that next meeting, sorry. Oh, July right 10th. on the 10th. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, I, I but I'm not here the 24th. So, right, so it sounds the like there is no next meeting. 
Yeah, there's no. no but I think you're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, but she's gone. Yes, the we want to warn on All right, so here, here's the thing. We, so, we, we. What'd you say? Move to move along to rotate the positions. Yeah. Something like that. I, and I'd be Carl really saying doing. he doesn't have experience. I don't know. Does his vice chair? What, what's involved yeah. in vice? Why don't you tell him not to say that you're you're even. Well, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's a little bit of. It's a little bit of what you just how you decide to be involved though right so wouldn't you agree chuck it's sort of like what your availability is to to dive in and talk to chuck and talk to yeah. the chair about what they need or you know in some what ways sort it's of like being the vice president of the to, united states it's like you need to support was vice president or, of my networking group and it's kind of like as there you're you able yeah you know and, and to fill in when the chair is and yeah, so what the I've chair. seen is that's when so, you stepped in when you're right. absent. But, yeah. but, you there's know, and, but there's behind the scenes of Typically when something happens and I can't hold a Becky well actually I know you two, so I know like which one's better to talk to in certain situations. <laughs> <laughs> so he picks and chooses. Yeah, 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 he manages the he manages the, the Chuck, he wouldn't know who so to do call. Do I call Becky first or call Anika and then tell her to call Becky? Hmm. <laughs> You know, <laughs> how does this work? <laughs> no, but um, yeah. So if, if Becky's not there, I and I need uh, to run something past you, like some if applicant wants to do something that you know, well, you, I need someone's approval, and you're going to step up to the plate and say, you know, the applicant, uh, yeah. you know, whatever you think that's an okay idea, or that tree can come down, or or whatever. I mean, a tree policy that I have a problem with usually I bring Dave in or Becky in or someone like that who can come over there and just support me on a decision but I don't usually try to bring it to the whole commission so but if the commission yeah. said kind of what's going on with that tree you know it, I would say well you know Carl went out there with me or Dave or Becky went out there with me you know the, Dave's done that many times he's checked them out himself so I think that's the only thing that would if, if that's part of the the reason would be I'm, I'm not completely in a place where I can be that free in my can, uh, can I actually even start so when I talk to you Becky I see, you know all things considered you know, I, I see that next year I, I just obviously don't he know. wants to be chair yeah, <laughs> I, I would be in a better position to be that I've been on, on long chair. enough that I feel comfortable that I should and I do think would it is good to have a rotation would, would so I would be, be willing to be vice oh, oh my lord <laughs> You're gonna have to change the, your. You can't have those shirts coming in like that. You gotta dress for the car. Man. Okay. From now on, I'll just. You're gonna have to wear the flannel from yeah. now on. <laughs> Get him. Yeah. You can't. You catching on? You spending too much time in New York, man. <laughs> so. Well, and check whether I'm chair or vice chair. If I'm available, I think you know after this amount of time, and I'm on the commission, you can call. Yeah. You know, if I'm available, no, I get you the, can call me. I, I, you know, and I'd be fine reporting to you and the chair and the vice chair or wh however it works out. But you now, if if you need the one need the, me to be the one thing vice chair, you gotta do it. you gotta though. It it's great of all of you volunteer and stuff, but. We had in the past people, and I'm not going to name names, that would speak on behalf of the commission as if it was the commission. You can't do that. You, you know, you can't, you, you can't, you just can't do that. Um, Especially the chair. As a matter of fact, it's better not to say anything until it's the meeting and then after everyone has spoken. Then you, you know, you spill out your verdict like Solomon, you know. This is what I'm going to tie it all together, and I'm going to tell everybody what's going on. But and, you know, and when you've got you know selectmen, I, I did have selectmen calling me kind of randomly, and then some other people trying to call me too. And I'm, at least Chuck guards guards the gate regarding yeah, the, that. The picture that you're. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. So. I'm just jealous. You know. I wanted them to tell me the story before I let you know. It, is there another? It, is, no. Is there yes. another, <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. What issue? So, so with this point, is, is new new blood or like the seventh member? It's, is that a well, thing that we're it, trying to do? To there you? is a, there. Rotating the chair it helps with 
kind of that functional mm -hmm. health of the yeah. commission. Right. And if the same chair and vice chair are on for a very, very yeah. long time, that, th there's some fatigue that I kind of builds in public perception. And right. That's why I'm saying it sounds so like there's it's the one more person to kind of help. Right? It's to, good, to but it's good if like Anik has been the chair before and mm -hmm. you know a few times and so there is you know that not learning process but being comfortable yeah the time, it, I, you know yeah. starting out and again be nervous the first few times anyways but then it's like whatever just read from the script and <laughs> let everybody else talk <laughs> um, but yeah I, I mean I don't know I don't Dave Cowell was a good example of knowing the regulations really pretty well. You know, he, he does it all day long. And I don't, I don't have that off the top of my head anymore because I don't do it right all day long. I don't uh, prepare notices of intents for clients anymore. So, but, yeah. All right. So now we've, that's the overview. So if we have two either two people that need to be reinstated or we're going to be, you know, passing the torch. Uh, and if Mike's going to be vice chair, we have to, I think our description needs to change just a little bit. <laughs> to, 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 to what? To what? Oh, he definitely should bring some food or something like that, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, what are you allergic to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Then there's the. Oh yeah, and then we could have the party at your house. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, take it away. Might be in conflict. Just, I've got a structure in the. Yeah. The, the, that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. I mean, in violation. That illegal thing going. I don't think I checked. There's no permit for that <laughs> structure, <laughs> and it's over four feet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, do you have a structural design? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just sloped it three to one to oh, okay. get, get okay. it less than four feet. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. Does so, everyone? So I nominate uh, Rebecca Longley as chair. Second. All those in favor? Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You don't count. You don't count. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Um, I make a motion to uh, nominate Mike Flynn as vice chair. Second. All those in favor? All those abstained? Did you write this down or are you just like staring? How could he forget? This is a big moment in his life. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh. Right, it's well, entertainment if you're watching tonight. That's that's uh, another year commitment. All right. Or so. Well, uh, as much I, as you can do. Well, yeah. As much as I can do, because I do have some uh, future plans. <laughs> yeah. Future plans. I guess. Cryptic. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. Okay. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Are we? Yeah. Are we done? Are we done? Have anything else on that page? Did uh, we do town day? What? Did we did do not do town day? Okay. I think that's going to be <laughs> now part of the, the the job description. Yeah, there, there's part of it right there. I'm sure I had all those lollipops. They ran Maybe up. Give me a shadow, Mike. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's a tough shadow to get into. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. This direction, maybe. But. Rooming. Okay. Okay. I think we're finished. As long as I have all everything signed, yeah, so I'm not sure that out. we're got. Red one's mine. Chuck, you got Steenbrook in here. Yep. All right. Never seen a more happier crowd after an election. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Early 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 meeting. Meeting. All right. Time to go see the debacle. Yeah. See. What? Early meeting. <laughs>
Yeah, I think yeah. it'll be on time to go see the, the debacle on TV. See the what? Oh, yeah.